Hi everyone, it's Zach with Palantir Research. Big win for Palantir extending their army contract another year for the Vantage platform, but Louis De Palma continues to double, triple down, but also new demo and blog posts from Palantir as well. So looking at the stock first, we see positive movement this morning flying to the 19s as of this recording, riding on those inflation numbers and Fed rate decisions alongside mixed indices, but the Nasdaq is positive at least. But for Palantir's price movement, you can also say it's probably attributed to the continuation of their Vantage business with the Army. So starting with the big news here, Palantir wins an extension to their Army contract. I made a whole video on the explanation last night when the news broke, but essentially this is a continuation of revenue for one more year, so remember that. Where the $458 million over four years originally is around $114.5 million per year. So this additional one hundred fifteen million is not growth in revenue, but maintenance for this contract for another year. But I'd say this is still much better than a reduction or just going away, which wouldn't make practical sense, of course, in the scenario. But either way, good job for Palantir on bringing value to the Army and getting ready for the next phase of their Army platform. But good old William Blair's Louis De Palma, of course, comes back again and reiterates his underperform. This is hilarious because this is like three times from this guy in less than a month and the fixation on this specific contract here. But either way, he wants to argue semantics. Essentially, he literally meant that when there's a reduction in the contract, he expected for him, he wanted another four year, $458 million contract, it sounds like, at least from his quote here. They weren't given this one, of course, which no one was expecting at all. But sure, I guess you're technically right then in that case. And the multi-vendor approach is now for phase three. So he wanted to clarify he didn't mean this one year, which was actually what he did mean before with the upcoming renewal. But he's got to pick the points he's able to defend, right? But either way, at least he notes this is only one year, which I pointed out yesterday as well to help quell investor excitement. This is a continuation, but the surprise is still that this was not the original terms of the contract. So someone could have easily said, well, maybe revenue will go to zero for this once it's done or a reduction. But that didn't happen for at least the short term in this one year. But either way, it's funny to cover. Now, for other news, we've got a new demo on the Palantir Developers channel called Building with Palantir AIP, AI-powered process mining. So in this video here, I'll summarize kind of quickly, hopefully, the presenter outlines the process of building a application step-by-step. -step. The key steps are including syncing data from their example of Titan Industries to their platform using Hyper Auto, and that's using Pipeline Builder for data transformations, and then developing the audit to cache process mining ontology, which is then connecting it to Titan Industries overarching ontology. So mining that order to cache process using machinery, embedding the process into an end user application using workshop. So making that workflow and ontology AI centric using AIP logic as well, all encompassing, and then finishing up, of course, with deploying the automation suite, automating that, and then for AI centric decision making at scale. So additionally, they also wanted to emphasize just the importance of defining those input objects, which can be used for instructing a generative AI model using AIP logic, and that's to make the decisions there. And then integrating the AI logic into the ontology. So that demonstration concludes with the potential for full automation using the automate tool, which continually checks for new data, executes that defined logic autonomously here, so you don't have to do it yourself manually. So in the end, it's a way to become more efficient, but the artificial intelligence platform is that infrastructure for you to discover these points of improvement, and then of course implementing that it's 37 minutes long there for those who want the detail but great job pound here for continually showing off your product next we've got this blog post which is related to ai policy now in the united states it's their response to the omb or office of management and budget in regards to ai governance innovation and risk management so in their response pound is offering guidance on the chief ai officer role where they're advocating for incorporating ai governance into existing agency oversights and then emphasizing responsible ai innovation through collaboration with all the sectors here, meaning you get a full picture. And Pouncer also provides their own insights on leveraging generative AI, proposing strong testing and evaluation framework, and then collapsing safety and rights evaluations into a single high-risk assessment here, just to make it easier. Pouncer is also recommending in the post refining agency risk assessments by clarifying the metrics, and then continuously evaluating, and then incorporating that data privacy impact. So additionally, they're going to suggest planning for AI systems, releasing rollouts, upgrades, discontinuations. Lastly, Pouncer encourages transparent public reporting of agencies' AI use. So it's to focus on that governance description there, risk assessments, audit results, security incidents, and then mitigations throughout the AI system lifecycle. So this is on brand for Palantir, and they'll continue to recommend to the government their vision for how AI is implemented in government and wider society. But another Palantir Daily Down, and I'll see you in the next video.